Hi, everybody. Sorry I couldn't make it tonight. Hopefully I'll run into each of you next quarter so I can find out how your projects went. So for my project, I designed a gravy boat. Not because I'm some mashed potato fanatic. It was more of an exploration in form. My first idea was actually to make an iPhone dock, and thankfully Craig stopped me before I started catting my design. As some of you know, I'm a bit of a tech nerd, and this was admittedly predictable for me. I realized I should probably take advantage of the CNC machine to make something that I couldn't possibly make on the mill or lathe. In other words, less Dieter Rams and Johnny Ive, more Kareem Rashid. So I went back to the drawing board and started sketching some crazier forms. And to help me narrow my scope, I walked around campus for a bit, and I started paying close attention to leaves, their symmetry, the subtle curves along their surface. I noticed how their tips are sharply pointed, yet because of the graceful approach to that tip, the leaves still seem more gentle than they do threatening. In fact, it reminded me quite a bit of the ancient structures I saw when I visited China and Japan years ago. The corners of their roofs traditionally feature curvatures from all directions to create a unique look. So I wanted to find a way to incorporate those design elements into a product, a lamp maybe, an ice cream scooper, a bowl. Eventually, I settled on a gravy boat. The act of pouring reminded me of rainwater dripping from a leaf. I love how the water runs along the leaf's veins until it collects into a single droplet, and I wanted to recreate that somehow. In this sketch, this is one of the later sketches, I made the container a small cube in stark contrast to the many curves around it, and there's just a sliver running from that space to the tip of the gravy boat. However, Craig brought to my attention how difficult it would be to machine these tight corners. So when I began catting the design with machining in mind, I gave more clearance for tools. In fact, what you see here was finalized just before my last machining session. I was still tweaking the angles of the slopes to make sure my tools wouldn't run into the walls. What have remained intact since the beginning, however, are the inflections between different curves. The front of the piece curves one way, while the back curves another. The piece also does this in the X direction. But it's more than playful form giving, it turns out that I could use these curves to offer the user a perfect way to cradle the piece. I always found that traditional gravy boats had too small of a handle, given the weight of the content. Cradling it rather than holding it like a teacup seems like a better solution. Now making the CAD model was tedious at times. I had to construct cross sections at critical points along the profile, and then create guide curves to help SOLIDWORKS loft the sketch as I had imagined. And then finally, mirror the part. As for machining the part, I began with a 5x5 five five inch block of aluminum, 14 inches long. I machined the bottom side, filled the cavity with Bondo, flipped it, and machined the top side. Here we see the bottom of the piece being surfaced, after I had already roughed out the general shape. This is the finished bottom side before it was filled with Bondo. And here is the top being roughed out. Now, unfortunately, I was unable to surface the top side, but with greater machine availability early next quarter, I should have a finished piece very soon. So a mountain of aluminum chips and a couple of broken tools later, I have to say it was an incredibly rewarding experience designed for both aesthetics and manufacturability. More than ever, I learned how to tackle a challenge with no clear solution. There was never one way of machining my piece, so I didn't quit GibbsCam until I believed I had the most efficient processes to produce the highest quality results. There was something incredibly satisfying about reducing machining time, reducing the number of tools needed, and all the while giving the piece a higher quality, more consistent finish. That being said, I was still nervous every time I hit the start button. The challenge I had to face was the depth of my piece, especially with smaller tools and tighter corners, it was nerve-wracking to see it plunge three to four inches below the surface of the material. Stiffness was a big concern, and I had to do my best adjusting the feed and spindle rates to keep the chip load down. I have to give big thanks to Craig and Colin. You know, every time I thought I was on the right track, Craig was there to tell me, I'm not thinking about it right, and I really appreciated that because it pushed me further in my design. And of course, none of this and what my classmates did would be possible without Colin being in the shop every day through lunch and dinner for us answering 
every one of our annoying questions. So thank you both very much. It was an awesome quarter. Have a great spring break, everyone.